Thank you. 
we've got a good week coming up. We've got uh, our regular schedule starting with Bible study tomorrow night. Then Tuesday, a board meeting at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesday is our busy day. We've got Methodist women are meeting and care team is meeting in the morning. And then in the afternoon, our youth and our children's choir and then our confirmation class, and then our bell choir, and then our regular choir, and then our band, all rehearsing. Well, we, we do a lot on Wednesdays. Uh, and uh, Thursdays and Fridays, I don't know of anything going on. Uh, we, of course, got our daycare continues on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they're doing great. Uh, if, if, there's a, if there's a Tuesday and a Thursday, in between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. and you're feel, you're sitting at home thinking, I just feel so down today, nobody loves me. Come up here and say hello to our kids. And they will be so happy to see you. It will just make your day. And it's one thing I do, I, I walk in and I go, hello everybody, hello and then when it's time to say goodbye, they take forever to say goodbye. They don't want to say goodbye. They're just great. So, uh, you know, that, that's a great uh, ego booster, though. They're, they're wonderful. They're as cute as can be. Um, that's all the announcements I know. Does anybody have anything else? I did want to let you know, and, and Russell, you made me think of this. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Because of the, the winter storm last year, y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. How much fun you had? Yeah. yeah. Well, our church insurance went up 40% this year. About $8,000 increase. And I just tell y'all that to let you know if you're, if you're wondering what to do with that extra $100 that's burning a hole in your pocket. We got a good place to put it. So, uh, just one of the things that, that's happened this year, and I, you know, it's it's nobody's fault. It's if you if you want to complain about it, call the state insurance board because they're the ones that okayed it. Yes. Seriously, uh, our, our local insurance people, they, you know, that's not their doing. But uh, uh, when the state insurance board okays an increase like that, I think, what in the world are they thinking? So, anyway, all right, that's all I'm going to say about that, maybe. <laughs> Joyce! Oh, I, just after I talk about insurance, now I'm going to talk about Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> what Joyce would you like to share this morning? You've had a good week. What happened? It was so wonderful. I made it back from the winter storm over in Central Texas. Oh, you were up in Central Texas when that hit? Yep. Ooh, so that was dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, well, glad you made it. Yeah. Oh, I survived the whole week with my boss in town. <laughs> with your boss in town. Yeah, she, she comes like twice a year, so it's rough. for six months. I had three little dogs and one I had three little dogs at the time, and they didn't freeze, even though there was, I had no electricity for two weeks. Yeah, last year. Oh, last year. Last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had my electric bill was high last year and it's high this year. Mine was not last year. All right, we're going to stick with this week. <laughs> we celebrated Shannon's birthday last Tuesday. Oh, oh, so that's why you call us Kate. <laughs> who, who has it? Who has it, John? Right here, front of you. Bakers? Bunches? What did he, what happened? Yeah, I had school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no school this past Friday? Got out early Thursday. Got out early on Thursday. That counts. Yeah, I can remember those days. <laughs> hey, I knew you had something important. <laughs> All right. Other joys. Our last night was junior senior prom, and our young people were absolutely stunning. 
Oh, and I hear it was great. We went up there and cleaned up at midnight, and all this chaperone says it was flawless. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. And you made it here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I have electricity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Other joys. <clears throat> Anybody else? All right. Well, let's sing some more. We're going to sing My Jesus.
that's when our coaches could start coaching us. That was that was the earliest thing. We we kind of started practicing before that, but the coaches couldn't be with us. We, you know, we'd start getting our arms going and doing that kind of thing. But then the coaches would be with us, February 1st. Of course, now, I grew up over in Katy, not far from here. And what happens in February down here? What does it do a lot of? A lot of cold rain. And it wasn't any different when I was in high school. That wasn't so long ago, it hadn't changed that much. Cold rain. And guess what Coach said when it was raining and cold? Still had practice. <laughs> He'd tell me to get out the rubber balls. So he had some rubber baseballs instead of the leather ones. And we practiced with the rubber balls. Raining, cold, miserable. Now, what did that do? Hmm? Of course, you know, you know, we needed it because we most of us hadn't thrown much or done much baseball was. We we didn't have year-round baseball back in those days. Uh, and so it was it was it got us in shape, but it also made it so that uh, nobody else wanted to play us in iffy weather. If it was kind of cold or maybe a little misty or foggy or anything else, they didn't want to play the Katy Tigers because we didn't care. Because, you know, our games didn't start until March, usually, and really didn't get into full schedule until April. And cold and wet in March and in April is a lot different than cold and wet in February. Y'all know what I mean? I mean, in February, it's a lot colder and a lot wetter, it feels like. When you're cold, you, I mean, you just, you're miserable. So we're like, you know, it's cold and wet in March, and we're like, oh, this isn't bad. <laughs> and we just go out there and play. See, it made us, when others didn't want to play, we were ready to play. When others had, they came across some tough times, they, they fell apart. But we got stronger. Because we knew we could do it. We'd done it before. And so it made us a better team. <coughs> now when you're in the middle of practice in February and you're cold and you're wet, you, you're kind of pretty miserable. And you don't you kind of wonder, you know, why, why didn't coach cancel practice? You know. Well, that's why. That's why. So I, I learned that lesson. I learned that lesson well. And so even today, you know, we all have things we need to practice. And of course, here in church, we think about practicing the things that Jesus taught us, right? Even when it's cold and wet and the wind is blowing and you don't really feel like doing it, just tough it through, right? And then that'll make it easier next time. Say a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us good lessons about your truth and about your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
you choir. You know that first first when they did that at our early service this morning, I saw Hillary over here. I, I thought you were going to give them a note, and it was going to be acapella singing. <laughs> then she gave them the note, and then the piano kept playing. <laughs> well, isn't that interesting? <laughs> That was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. We are continuing our stu- uh, study in Ephesians. Today, today we are in chapter 5 of Ephesians. I'm going to read verse 1 through 10 and 14 through 21. Paul writes, Do as God does. After all, you are his dear children. Let love be your God. Christ loved us and offered his life for us as a sacrifice that pleases God. You are God's people, so don't let it be said that any of you are immoral or indecent or greedy. Don't use dirty or foolish or filthy words. Instead, say how thankful you are. Being greedy, indecent, or immoral is just another way of worshiping idols. You can be sure that people who behave in this way will never be part of the kingdom that belongs to Christ and to God. Don't let anyone trick you with foolish talk. God punishes everyone who disobeys him and says foolish things. So don't have anything to do with anyone like that. You used to be like people living in the dark, but now you are people of the light because you belong to the Lord. So act like people of the light and make your light shine. Be good and honest and truthful as you try to please the Lord. Light shows up everything, just as the scriptures say. Wake up from your sleep and rise from death. Then Christ will shine on you. Act like people with good sense and not like fools. These are evil times, so make every minute count. Don't be stupid. Instead, find out what the Lord wants you to do. Don't destroy yourself by getting drunk, but let the Spirit fill your life. When you meet together, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to thank God the Father for everything. Honor Christ and put others first. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow with me for a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. <laughs> Paul is not writing anything new here. He has written before. He will write again. Uh, I, I've had some people tell me, You know, Brother Mike, there's only so many times I need to hear love Jesus and love others. And I'm like, really? Okay. Because that is hopefully what I preach, right? If I get too far away from that, then then I'm going wrong. That's really what... But 52 Sundays a year? Do you need 52 Sundays a year of love God and love others? How often do you go get your car inspected? Once a year, right? Once a year. Uh, How many times do you need a booster shot? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, the one country I see doing it right is, is, is Israel. They say every five months. Because they say after five months, the, the effects are just gone. So, you know, it depends on what you want to do. If you, and, you know, you may not ever get the shot. That's okay. Uh, now, how often should you change the oil in your vehicle? 
5,000 miles, 3,000 miles, three months. You know, depends on depends on the vehicle rides, you know. You have to take care of things. Uh, how often do you go to the dentist? Twice a year. Twice a year. Good, good. And, and more often if you need to. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what do we do here at church? Once a week. We offer you weekly doses, right? Weekly doses. Is that good enough? No. Do you know what I preach? I preach daily, daily injections. That doesn't sound like fun, does it? <laughs> daily injections of prayer, Bible study, and devotional reading. There's Dr. Mike's prescription. How often do we need to take communion? As often as you can. That, that's what John Wesley said. Um, I have, in, in churches I've served, we've had weekly communion. We, we've had, we had a setup where it could be easily done, and, and we did it. Uh, I did my first assignment as the pastor of a church. And, and I, one of the reasons I wanted to do it was because I need to learn how to do this ceremony. <coughs> And, and it helped me to do it every week. And, you know, so I, I learned it. Um, yeah, how often do we need to hear the good news? How often does God offer it? Does, he, does God ever stop offering it? I mean, as you walk out the door this afternoon, or this morning, actually, you'll be able to see the good news, won't you? Out there. Bright blue sky. The birds, the, the trees, the grass. Oh, you know, <clears throat> look into the faces of the people you love here right now. You see, this is one of the reasons I love being up here is I do get to look into y'all's faces mm -hmm. as we go through worship. One of the things I, I've had some times in my in my career as a, as a pastor where I, I'm sitting where you sit and I really feel that loss. The choir is nice to look at, but uh, you know they're not as many as y'all, and, and I it, I bet y'all enjoy it too, don't you? Like to look at them. I mean these are these are our friends and our neighbors. And, and uh, not not everybody's as pretty as Russell. <laughs> <laughs> James is just glad I'm picking on somebody else. <laughs> God never stops proclaiming. God's love for us always. So what does that tell you? How, how often do we need to hear it? If God is always proclaiming it. We always need to hear it. We always need to hear it. Now this is, I, I love the way Paul starts this, because this is a familiar thing to say. This is, this is straight out of Jesus's Sermon on the Mount. Right at the end of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Therefore, be ye perfect as God is perfect. And we're like, who, what? <laughs> but see, Paul says it in a different way here. And my translation is a little bit different too. You must always act like your Father in heaven. That's, that's the way my translation says what Jesus said. And Paul, I think... Puts it in the most succinct form. He says, do as God does. 
Because see, here's the catch point for us. It, it's not the hearing and the knowing that we really need. What do we really need help with? The doing. And, and this, is, well, this is where Paul's concentrating because he knows us. He knew the people he was writing to. And, and we haven't changed much in these 2,000 years. Do as God does. It's not enough to know what God knows, and we're certainly not even really close on that one, but uh, do as God does. Love, love yourself, <coughs> and love others. Buy the things that you say and do. We can always hear that. We always need to hear that. Just like we always need to come to his table to remember what Christ has done for us and who he has called us to be. He has called us to be his own dear people. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What prayer concerns would you like to lift up this morning? Yes, ma'am. Keep praying for my sister Deanna Phillips. She had her surgery the other day, and she's they are waiting on the results from the lymph nodes now to find out what's next and everything. And keep my mama, Louise Kuchero. I was going to ask you about Louise. Her Peter. Just we miss her when she's not here. Yeah, her feet are killing her. And she's got some other issues going on with them. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> My husband Tommy's going to have hip replacement surgery tomorrow morning. So, oh, hey, for him wow. and for me as a caregiver. Now, what is his first name? Tom. Tom. Hip replacement. They just do those one at a time, don't they? Yeah, it's like they outpatient. It's, so. it's, it's, it's outpatient? Yeah. Yes. Well, we'll pray for you too yes. then. Because <laughs> I know who the nurse has to be in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Others? Oh, yes. Uh, any picture of my friends in Central Texas uh, as they're coming out of the winter storm? Just that, you know, stuff like their pipes don't burst and, you know, uh, they get warm weather soon. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's close. So if they made it this far, they're probably going to be in pretty good shape until the next storm. Yeah. yeah. So we'll pray for your friends. Thank you. Alan Wright. Alan. Alan Wright. One of my business partners and diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Pray for Alan. 
Ron? Michelle Cappell. Okay. Michelle Cappell. Thank you. Ron, go ahead. Uh, continue to pray for Linda's mother. She's making some progress, but my patience is a little... <clears throat> Needs some tweaking there. It's it's too slow for me. And Crystalline and her family, of course. Crystalline was uh, diagnosed with uh, COVID last week. Again. Was it last Sunday? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like a week ago, probably. Yeah. Roby Lawrence, Mickey's mom. Yeah. Roby. Others? My my niece, her <laughs> and my great nephew. He's getting married today, but um, it's not it's not an ideal and fun wedding, I don't think. <laughs> Unusual. I pray for my aunt's family. My aunt Mario passed away this past week. Um, her three daughters and their families. Um, their daddy uh, died a few years back. But Aunt O was 95. We're going to miss her. Are there other prayer concerns? Pray for Tom. He's not able to drive, or no, he, right now he can drive. He's, he's in uh, New Jersey, right? Now. Oh gosh, that's a long yeah, way from home. So he has to have a translator up there, right? <laughs> Not as bad as Boston. <laughs> Here's the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Would you please stand and offer to one another signs of God's reconciliation and love? <laughs>
let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks to you for all that you have given to us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would receive this offering, that you would bless it and multiply it for your kingdom here on earth. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> body which we break symbolizes the body of our Lord. It is broken by our sin, by our selfishness. But he gave himself as a sacrifice so that we might be whole again. Even though we are broken. The cup over which we give thanks is a remembrance of the blood that he shed for us. The life that he gave to us so that we could truly live again. table has been prepared. Will you come now to the feast?